On this episode of BTV, we talk about opportunities in the medical field, an opportunity to redo classes you failed, and the personal battle Miss Cookson's been fighting behind the scenes. All of this and more on this episode of BTV. <laughs> Welcome back to the first episode of BTV of 2024. I'm your anchor, Alex. And I'm your co-anchor, Julia. If you are not aware, choir teacher Lisa Cookson has been fighting cancer since her diagnosis at the end of the last school year. But she hasn't let that slow her down. She recently shared with us how her students have helped support her during this difficult time. Happy The Southeast Madrigals recently surprised vocal music teacher Lisa Cookson on her birthday. <laughs> Cookson has been the choir teacher at Southeast for nearly 20 years and has welcomed thousands of students into her classroom. Cookson makes every student feel welcome and allows them to express themselves. She makes us feel like a family. Um, and that's definitely the most important thing about it is she makes sure no, one's is, no one is left out. She always has this level of energy that is very, very outgoing and she's a very positive person. I've never seen Miss Cookson like lose her temper on any particular student. She always brings this level of energy that I, I very much respect and admire from, from teachers. Recently, Cookson received a diagnosis which has changed her life. I was diagnosed with breast cancer last May, and um, my fall started, even before school started, I started um, the chemotherapy process. However, Cookson has continued teaching during her treatment, something that helps her keep a positive mindset. My teaching has been something that's helped me go, keep going, because I find on the weekends it's easy to sit and not do anything because you're tired and the, the fatigue really hits then. But when I'm at school, it's like, okay, I've got to do this. This is my job. And I, I put on my teacher, um, my teacher act and I become that teacher. So that's kind of really kept me going. She shows up and that's what I absolutely love about Miss Cookson is that despite all of these hardships that she's been given, She's still the first person I see when I walk into, you know, the concert or rehearsal or whatever the case might be, and uh, she's always there supporting us. Cookson has remained extremely positive about her diagnosis and has not let this disease get the best of her. I only have six rounds total, and there are people, there's a person in this building right now, a staff member, who has had several years of treatments, and I think, okay, if, if they can do that, I can do my six little rounds and get through it. So I just maintain that positive attitude. As the new year begins, Cookson is reaching the final stages of her treatment. I have to be on a, a therapy that's a, a hormone therapy that's a pill for five years. And um, so for a couple of years, I have to do, um, I have to do for a year, three month checkups, then six month checkups. Um, and then I have one follow up surgery that I have to have at the, after the first of the year. Many of her students are very inspired by her strength, and Cookson feels thankful for their support and the support of the Southeast community. She's, she's, she's like amazing. She hasn't changed at all. Like she makes like jokes about it, but she's like the same, like she's positive. She doesn't, she doesn't let it get her down or anything. And I, I just really admire that about her. I've had a great supportive family and I've had a great, the staff here has been very supportive. The administration has been very support, supportive of my um, my needs and taking care of myself and being able to put my health first so that I can maintain teaching in the classroom. So I've just appreciated all that support from students, from staff um, and administration. For BTV, I'm Julia Harvey. Thanks for all you do, Ms. Cookson. Your strength and perseverance is an inspiration. Have you ever failed a course required to graduate? Reporter Ian Martinez tells us one way you can recover that credit. 
If you are in need to recover your credit course classes that are required to graduate, then there are several options, so including Extended Learning Opportunity or ELO. There is an opportunity for students who um, need a course to graduate and did not earn that credit during that semester. And it's only for eligible courses um, like your English courses, certain math courses, science, social studies, um, financial literacy, and PE. Depending on which classes you fail, there are a variety of teachers to help you recover. They do financial literacy. Kids can do an assignment from that topic and they have to do enough assignments that are worth a certain amount of points that will bring their grade up to passing. Anyone who scored 50 through 59% are eligible to take ELO. So if you failed a course and got at least a 50% and that course is required for graduation, that's who's eligible and it's only for the semester that you failed that course in. Other credit recovery options like Learning Center and Summer School will make sure you take the entire course again unlike Extended Learning. So usually ELO is for 30 contact hours, so it kind of depends on the time of year. Uh, we usually do it for about two and a half hours after school during the, for the fall semester. Um, and then in the summer, we run it all day from 7.30 to 3.30 um, for only four days. Unfortunately, not everyone takes advantage of this opportunity. It's about 30 to 35 percent of our students who take advantage of the opportunity. Um, for instance, we had 402 credits available to be recovered this semester and at this point we've had 168 students take advantage of the opportunity. It's huge, like this is a really good opportunity especially if you know you just barely missed out or you know it's, it's, a, it's basically a chance to get your grade up to passing and you don't have to sit through the entire class again. If you are in need of recovering those lost credits then you can still sign up at the end of each semester. For BTV, I'm Ian Martinez. Thanks Ian. If you miss out on passing a required class, you'll get another chance at the end of the school year. Speaking of educational opportunities, are you interested in going into the medical field? Reporter Brody Shaw tells us about an innovative program you may want to consider. She's in charge of instrumentation, also in charge of assisting me, so uh, when we were working earlier, she had to be up here doing two jobs at one time. At WSU Tech, there is a program for students that are interested in having a medical career. Uh, we train students to uh, assist the surgeon uh, during the procedure. They have to maintain the sterility of the entire surgical procedure. So, While in the program, students will get real-world experience while working towards a degree. Associate degree program, so the first year students spend doing their prerequisite classes. Um, and the program itself is about 12 months. <clears throat> Our students come into the lab and we go through all these simulated procedures. Um, but there's over 40 procedures that we can do in this lab and simulate. Um, the students are going to get an experience and hands-on before they get to the OR setting. And While in high school, students should do what they can to get their prerequisites out of the way. We see a lot of students that it's nice having, not to get missed out, a lot of students having the general education classes out of the way. Uh, some might go on to nursing, um, some might go into first assisting. Uh, if you have any questions about the program, please reach out to WSU Tech. For BTV, Brody Shaw. Thanks Brody, that looks like a great opportunity for future medical students. At the beginning of the school year, new behavior rules were implemented at Southeast. Reporter Noah Wiggins gives us an update on how those rules have changed the culture at Southeast. After a full semester with all the new rules, there's been some noticeable changes in behavior throughout the school. Students and the administration have felt a difference and, and seen a difference. When you look at the data that we've collected, whether it's tardy data, discipline data, um, it is down quite significantly. So The new rules have cut tardies in half compared to this point last year. First semester last year, the total number of tardies we had were 25,000 plus tardies. And this year we're down to about 11,000 tardies. Um, so you see a significant difference in the number of kids who are making it to class versus last year being tardy to class. As you can see, first semester last year ended with 25,751 tardies. Now that's dropped substantially to 11,097, a decrease of 56%. Wittig also suggests the positive behavior changes have been due to not just the new rules, but also a change in culture. There's 2,000 students, right? 
And so it's because of you and the environment you guys want to create is why we're successful. So I want to personally say thank you to all the students because it truly is you guys are making the difference. Southeast High School has changed this year and it's because of the students and the success that you're having. The rules positively affected tardies and hallways and now we're aiming to extend this positivity in the classroom. From what I've heard from our staff, they have seen our kids be more productive by being in class on time. Um, there's more of a sense of purpose to be in class now. So far, behavior has improved considerably, leading to a positive and safer environment here at Southeast. For BTV, I'm Noah Wiggins. Thanks, Noah, and thank you, Buffs, for helping make a difference. Though there have been some positive changes at Southeast, vandalism has been a reoccurring issue, especially in the bathrooms. Reporter Tanika Thompson tells us what has been going on. Vandalism in the bathrooms has been a problem for years. Students we spoke to said this year seems to be worse. I've seen a lot more of it this year rather than last year. I don't think I saw any last year. Or I guess I might have. I probably did yet last year, but... um. This year, I feel like there might have been a spike in vandalism in the bathrooms. From a lack of cleanliness to broken salt dispensers to inappropriate words on the doors, there are a lot of concerns with bathrooms this year. I've seen a few cuss words uh, engraved with some type of object into the, uh, the stall doors. I've seen some of that. I've also seen some uh, paint markers that have been taken, and someone has wrote something inappropriate on the walls. The administration is aware of the concerns. I have noticed some vandalism in the bathroom this year. There were a couple of soap dispensers that were um, knocked off of the uh, bathroom walls. There have been numerous challenges in the bathrooms that administration and security had to deal with. For the longest time, I refused to refill the soap dispensers. And if you notice that there was a cart outside the bathrooms that now had the hand sanitizer stations, um, and that was instead of locking bathrooms, I just went ahead and ordered hand, sanitize, hand sanitizing stations so that way we didn't have to refill the soap. Principal Cooper encouraged students to report any bathroom vandalism to admin or security. So if you see something, say something to admin, security, a teacher, uh, a parent, anyone so that we can find that person and get that taken care of. Vandalism can be a challenge, but with the help of students like you, we can help eliminate vandalism. For BTV, I'm Tanika Thompson. Thanks, Tanika. We all should do our part to take care of this building. On this segment of Have You Heard, Ethan and Eden ask you buffs what your New Year's resolution is. What's your New Year's resolution? My New Year's resolution is I want to create a Chuck E. Cheese with a gumball machine inside of it, with a gumball machine inside of that. But also, I also want to take care of the kids that's in Africa and make sure they got food and water. And the kids that don't get to eat, I want to change their lives. I want to make their, their life perspective a lot better. My New Year's revolution is getting that money, that dough cheese. That more emotion. Some kids try to show us their emotion. This is more emotion than they have. Feeding my kids, my family, and uh, doing good in school, you know. Doing sports for Southeast, you know. And we finna make it to the championship. That's all I got to say. Um, my New Year's resolution is to show up to school every day. So you weren't showing this to school before? No. Why not? Because I want to stay home. So you don't want an education? Um, I do now for the new year. I don't think that's how it works. People, one of the most common um, New Year's resolution is going to the gym, and that's usually because people are trying to compensate for something, usually insecurity. It's quite fascinating. So past this semester. Past last semester? I did. I failed one class though. What was that? What, what was that class? Biology. <laughs> Biology? <laughs> I don't know. Choir held their winter concert on December 11th. Trouble One, Tenor Bass Chorus, Armonia Durate, Concert Choir, and Madrigals all performed two to three festive songs and came together as a combined choir to sing Peace, Peace. Their next concert will be the Choir Festival concert on March 4th. Orchestra held their winter concert on December 13th. The concert included the concert, symphonic, and chamber orchestras playing songs such as Angels in the Bleak Midwinter, a festival of Christmas, and a Christmas triptych. Miss Farmer recently added new cats to her classroom. They were donated by science teacher Mrs. McKnight. 
The orange male, Frumpkin, was found walking down K-15 in Derby, and the black female, Jellybean, was found abandoned in Miss McKnight's front yard. Both of them love cuddles. Unfortunately, the other new cats, Biscuit and Gravy, have either run off or have been taken. LAC held a waffle sale on January 26th during lunch. You could either get a regular or chocolate chip waffle. They were $2 for a small one and $4 for a big one. You could also pay $1 for more toppings, including strawberries, whipped cream, chocolate syrup, and powdered sugar. Now on to William Sandlin with the sports. Welcome to the first sportscast of 2024. I'm your sports anchor, William Sandlin, and let's get straight on to the winter sports highlights. Boys basketball is currently 7-7. Seven seven. They beat North 79-30, South 64-44, East 54-38, and Bishop Carroll 65-55, with a close win against West to 61-60. At the Valley Center January Jam Tournament, they placed fifth after beating Newton 71-48 in the final game. Girls basketball is currently 6-8. They beat North 51-41 and had a dominant win against West 49-9. At the Glacier's Edge Tournament in Emporia, the girls placed 5th after beating Lawrence Free State 56-23. The top scorer was Alana Webb with 24 points and Leela Jones had 14 and Kayla Dean had 10. Tri-County started their season after winter break. In their first game against Clasm G, they unfortunately lost, but they had a dominant 44-27 win over Valley Center the next week. On January 25th, wrestling went up against Bishop Carroll on senior night. The boys won 57-22 and the girls won 51-27. This year, the seniors are Gregory Ferrari, Jamal Garrett, Natavius Matthews, Kephas Arangi, Vandanye Williams, Achilles Young, Tania Hunt, Katie Kane, Elena Stallion, Alea Safe, and Olivia Wilson. Boys swimming headed to East for their senior night. This year's senior is diver Jeremy Johnson. At the meet, Jeremy placed second and Henry Hover placed sixth. Jeremy and Henry are also in the top 25 divers for 6A11 dive. On the swimming side, Parker Ray placed fourth in the 50-yard freestyle and fifth in the 100-yard batter stroke. Bowling competed at the Great Plains Invitational on January 26th and 27th. The girls placed 27th and was led by Tanika Thompson with a score of 460. The boys placed 16th and were led by Maxwell Chase with a score of 656. That's it for the sports cast. Back to you, Julia and Alex. Thanks, William. That's all for this episode of BTV. We'll leave you with the sights and sounds from the granny basketball game. <laughs> Get up the floor. Oh!